Hey darling plant lovers, welcome, welcome. Now for a bit of a history lesson. I thought it would be fun today to talk a little bit about how the terrarium was discovered, how it's evolved over the years and where we are now. So let me take you through the mists of time to Victorian London. Victorian London was polluted and grimy, not the place for Nathaniel Bagshaw Ward, who was a physician by trade, to indulge his love of the natural world. Ward had a passion for ferns and had hoped to create a fernery in the garden of his home in Wellclose Square in East London. But in the early 19th century, the air in the East End was so thick with coal suit that all attempts to grow the ferns in his garden proved futile until he stumbled upon a solution. One day in 1829, Nathaniel placed the pupa of a hawk moth into a sealed glass bottle, intending to observe the moth hatch. Now little is known about the fate of the moth, but when a fern sprouted, he accidentally discovered that plants in glass containers could create their own biosphere and survive for long periods of time without watering. What Ward had created was essentially a terrarium and a way for him to grow his beloved ferns. Ward published the results of his experiments in On the Growth of Plants in Closely Glazed Cases in 1942, by which time he had already convinced his good friend Sir William Hooker of their usefulness. Now this friend also just happened to be the first official director of Kew Gardens. Nathaniel developed travelling glazed cases called Wardian cases. They would be able to transport plants all around the world, spurring a revolution in the movement of plants. Prior to the Wardian case, plants transported in ships perished due to a lack of fresh water, exposure to winds, extremes of temperature, and of course the rodents on board nibbling at them. Thanks to Nathaniel's discovery, they could travel within the glass walls, protected from the elements. The banana from which the seedless Cavendish banana was developed was carried to Chatsworth in a Wardian case, and in 1848 the Scottish botanist Robert Fortune used Wardian cases to smuggle more than 20,000 Camellia sinensis plants out of China to establish tea plantations in India and bring an end to the Chinese monopoly on tea. The Wardian case transformed the world's plant communities, fueled the commercial nursery trade and late 19th century imperialism, and forever altered the global environment. Domestically, Nathaniel's discovery was perfectly timed given the Victorians' burgeoning interest in exotic plants and ferns. This obsession for ferns, also known as pteridomania, invaded all aspects of life, as well as the living species being displayed in homes in elaborate Wardian cases. Fern motives and designs were commonplace on carpets, curtains and wallpaper, even custard cream biscuits couldn't escape the design of a fern's fronds being stamped onto them. They eventually fell out of favour, but growing plants under glass became fashionable again in the 1960s and 70s with the creation of the bottle garden. This new imagining of the terrarium required a skill for wiggling plants through thin bottlenecks and of course the patience of a saint or a myriad of bamboo tools and DIY planting devices. See my video on terrarium tools if you'd like to see what's in my terrarium toolkit. I love this image of David Latimer who hasn't watered his sealed bottle garden since 1972. We've once again seen its revival over the past 10 years and the terrarium remains a beautiful way of bringing the outdoors inside, providing the conditions essential for a moisture-loving tropical garden to flourish within our dry, centrally heated homes. If you like what you're watching, please hit the subscribe button. I try to upload a new video every week. Just in case you don't know, my name is Alison Mode and I've been creating with plants since 2013. I've written a book about them and sell many of my works with plants through my website, alisonmode.com. All the links to find me are in the description below. Thanks for watching.